<laughs> and we're back, fish. We're back. We've redeemed. We should have called last week Redemption Weeks. We we had it. Well, anyone that follows us, I finally got two out of three. The, the sun was shining. They were beauty in the air. I landed some bets, and and I'm happy. I landed a treble in the games. Uh, base, you had a brilliant one yourself. Come up with some brilliant bets. You got your double, I believe. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Good day. Only one um, I personally missed on was um, Christy. Well, I, I got the 49ers one right with the handicap, but then I had Christy McCaffrey getting more receiving yards. He didn't get the receiving yards because they just couldn't stop him rushing, so there was no need for him to check it down and uh, get the ball thrown to him. Um, Bish, what, do you want to go over yours quick? Yeah, same, two out of three. Um, I got the, the alternate handicap. Um, both the, I think it was the Bengals and the 49ers and then the overs in the, the Jags and Chargers game. That, that were a great game. And then the one that let me down is, is just, I'm, I'm kicking myself because uh, every other player prop I gave in that game went overs. Daniel Jones went overs easily. TJ Hawkinson absolutely smashed it. And then I, I threw out Jefferson and, uh, you know, to be fair to the Giants, I did a number on him. So, you know, bottled him up and, and that one didn't come in. And uh, I had Tom Brady overs written on my pad and I actually scribbled it out and put Jefferson in. So that's that's just another kick while I'm down as well. So, but you know, two out of three in profit and uh, you absolutely smashed it with that treble. So yeah, loving it. Good. Yeah, It was, it was definitely lived up to the super wild card round. Yeah, it did. It did. We were wondering why we got told, but yeah. Screw that. that! It was the super wild card because we landed two out of two each. We're flagging two out of three each. But yeah, uh, how how are you, Bish? What did you think of the? Before we get into it, obviously there's only four games. So what did you think of the uh, first round, the super wild card weekend? Yeah, I loved it actually. You know, the, the games were fun. You know, we had a massive comeback with it with the Jags. You know, what about that um, for a comeback? And then the Seahawks put up a real real good fight in the first half. Um, Bills looked a, a bit shaky after getting off to a, a big lead, and uh, you know the the Dolphins and Skylar T Thompson came back and uh, kept that um, <laughs> close. And then another one I'm kicking myself on. I, I got sucked into that Brady playoff hype, and uh, you know as you said last week, the, the record says what they are. They were a poor team, and uh, you know the Cowboys um, did a good number on them. So yeah. Great games and um, hopefully now divisional round, the, the number one seeds are back in, the Chiefs and the Eagles. So looking forward to, to another four great games. Basically, I've got to give you credit where credit's due. Um, you, you called, God, how early was this on that they were frauds? Uh, the Minnesota Vikings, basically, you must be happy over this. And obviously, you never like to see people lose, do you? But come on, you must be happy. You called that. Yeah. You, know, you know what, I'm... Again, I'm kicking myself because I talked it up last week. I talked up the Giants, talked them up, and then I went against everything and backed actually backed the Vikings, thinking they'd have enough. And to be fair, it was how I, you know I called it. I said the the last person to have the ball will have a chance to win the game, and you know the the Vikings had the ball um, down and needed a touchdown, and you know they couldn't get it done. But full credit to the to the um, Giants, as I said, they kept Jefferson bottled up and. Uh, Barkley and, and Jones, um, you know, had two two great games. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant to watch, wasn't it? I think, yeah, very happy for the Giants. They've had a really rough <laughs> couple of years. Saquon's had two or three terrible years himself with injuries. So, yeah, to be fair, I'm happy. I'm happy with that win. I think they deserved it and it, it's a good story as well. Like, you always like to see that. And then... Um, yeah, I just can't believe you talked yourself. I was shocked if you re <laughs> believe I couldn't believe what was coming out of your mouth when you said Vikings, but you should have listened to yourself weeks and weeks and weeks prior. You've talked yourself into it and you've gone, oh, you're panicked. But anyway, <laughs> next time, yeah, listen, to listen to yourself. Listen to yourself what you're talking about. But um, yeah, we'll get into it, Bish. First game of Wild Card Weekend. We've got Jacksonville Jaguars versus. The Kansas City Chiefs. Um, sorry, the Kansas City Chiefs are quite large favourites, of minus eight and a half, and then the over under is fifty two and a half. Bish, take us through it. Yeah, it's a big over under, isn't it? You know, we know the Chiefs. They're you know obviously number one seed, so they, they had the the rest last week and come into this. Um, 
you know, the offense is is on fire. Probably why that over under is so big. And the Jags are in high scoring games um, at the minute as well. Um, so yeah, big big win for them. You know, interesting game from Trevor Lawrence. Obviously started very shaky, four interceptions, um, five turnovers as a whole for the team, and then uh, you know, twenty seven nil down at one point in that first half, and you're like, wow, you know. Surely, that's it. Surely they can't come back. But, you know, somehow they did. They came back in that second half and uh, Trevor um, sort of composed himself. And I think full credit to, to the coach, Doug Peterson, I think late in that second quarter and in that in the third quarter, he sort of, um, he was dialing up just short passing plays, you know, just little five-yard gains over the top. Just letting, I think, letting uh, Trevor just... Gain a bit of composure and gain, you know, a bit of confidence back. And, um, you know, it, it sure worked in the end. I think Evan Ingram had a huge game. And I think they're going to have to do similar in this game. You know, Chiefs, as we said, number one in points scored um, this season. Total yards, passing yards. Um, so, you know, they're, they're going to be scoring points, you'd imagine, against that um, Jags secondary, which is is was bottom, uh, bottom five in, in the regular season. So... Um, you know, Chiefs Chiefs are going to be hard to stop. And I think for the Jags, if they can get Etienne going, you know, he had a great game last week as well, over 100 yards and uh, 20 carries. So, um, but I just think the, the Chiefs will have too much here. You know, the defence is good. The, the, the second in the league in sacks and Chris Jones is having having a big year. So I'm going to lean um, the Chiefs, the, the minus eight and a half. I will be... Um, Coming in, coming in on that for my best bets, like I did last week. I'll be, I'll be changing that handicap, um, just pinching a few points there. Because at the minus eight, obviously that's two scores. So you know, the, the, you know, the bookies have gotten two scores better. Um, I'm leaning the. Oh, this is a tough one. So I was. I think I'm going to have to go over. I was looking. I was trying to maybe be too cute on the unders and thinking the Jags maybe what score enough points to keep up with the Chiefs. Um, but then again, I'm thinking, obviously, the Jags, you know, they're a big fourth quarter comeback team, sort of, when they're against it. And we've seen in the regular season, Chiefs just letting big leads slip a little bit. So I'm going to lean overs on that one. But a bet that I really like, it's probably too short for my best bet. Um, it's four to five, uh, 1.8 for the decibel punters out there. But it's Chiefs to have um, over three touchdowns. So that's, um, you know, they're averaging 29, just short of 30 points a game. So, you know, if you add that up, that's um, at least four four touchdowns or three touchdowns and a couple of conversions, uh, field goals. So, you know, I think they'll get four touchdowns. So that's that's one that I've got on. Um, and then Jarrett McKinnon, anytime touchdown, you know, he's scored in his last six games, um, at least one. You know, he's uh, in the passing game, he's, he's like a little, a little threat there. Um, so I think close to the line, Mahomes might just dump one off to him. And that's coming in at uh, nine to ten, one one point nine for our decimal. So, yeah, there's there there for me on this one. So yeah, Chiefs minus eight and a half, and uh, a lean on the unders. Well, Ian, um, yeah, like I said, probably deserve a bigger shout. Uh, Jacksonville probably deserve a massive shout out. The the biggest comeback in uh, playoff history, I believe. So absolutely phenomenal, especially to watch. I didn't say I watched. I'm devastated. I actually missed this one, and I watched it again on YouTube, and it was just crazy, wasn't it? So yeah, unbelievable. Trevor Lawrence, real deal. Uh, and then in the second half, I think you started to see uh, that young defense coming through. Bish, to be honest, I think the young defense. We we talked about it quite a few weeks when we can't quite match them up. They're inconsistent because we put that down to them being very young. Uh, trying to figure it out, and I think they're starting to figure it out. They're slow; they're getting better and better each week. That and especially stopping the run. So um, yeah, I've got I've got Pacheco actually. I'll I'll dive straight in. I've got Pacheco, and I saw his line. I was very shocked. It's oh, it's fifty four and a half rushing yards, and I don't think he's going to hit that. I think they'll go like you said more on the McKinnon side, throwing the ball, little dump offs, and I think that's how how they might get the running backs involved in the offense more. The Chiefs, not saying that they won't do well, but I don't think the rushing game is the one where um, Pacheco's going to go crazy on. Um, as you said, other than that, Mahomes is the leading quarterback in PFF grade, even against the blitz, against everything, against pressure. 
So it, it don't matter with Mahomes, does it? Like you said, I think it's a matter of can Jacksonville keep up with them? It's it's a tough call, but isn't it? I I don't know. I'm tempted to take Jags plus eight point five. To be honest, uh, don't think again. I think it'd be a, a similar situation to Miami. Um, I think it'd be the same sort of situation where Chiefs rested. Sometimes the rest helps, but it also makes them a bit slower. I think they might have a slow start if you, if they go steaming in the first quarter. Forget that bet, but <laughs> but I think if they, they could have a slow start here, Bish, I think and. Uh, I think Jacksonville could keep up with them. The defence might get a few things wrong. They're, they're steaming up Jacksonville after the big win. But like you said, a step too far. I've got Chiefs winning Jacksonville plus 8.5, though, to make it close. It's a playoff game at the end of the day. Yeah, yeah no, I, I like that. And the, they actually played earlier on in the year and the Chiefs got off to a 20-0 lead. So, yeah, like you said, you know, the Chiefs coming off that by... Um, coming off that rest week, the, the Jaguars need to start hot. You know, they can't, they can't turn up like they did last week um, because I don't think the Chiefs will, will give up this lead this week. No, no. <laughs> yeah, simple as that. Yeah, they won't. So, next game, Bish, I think we yeah, covered that one quite well. We've got the New York Giants versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, the Giants coming off. Uh, the, the, the probably the game that upset you the most at the, <laughs> at the playoffs. They're, but they are, but the Philadelphia Eagles, sorry, are minus seven and our favourites. The Giants are underdogs in this game, and the over under is forty eight points. Bish, uh, where's your where's your head going? Yeah, big win, and Daniel Jones just uh, turning it on on the ground there. Seventy eight rushing yards he had, and Isaiah um, Hodkin, Hod, Hodgkins, uh, wide receiver, they picked up off waivers. Um, absolutely had an unbelievable game as well. 105 yards, one touchdown. I think career highs in targets. Um, sorry, in receptions, eight receptions he had. Um, and I think this this is actually a game that I went to week 14. Um, it was the other way around. It was it was at the MetLife, but um, you know I've seen these two teams uh, play, which is uh, which was good to watch. And as we as we get into it, there as we've talked about the Giants, they're very good at. at keeping games tight as the underdogs. You know, I said last week um, about their against the spread record and obviously that improved uh, this week. So they're actually 11-2 and two now against the spread as an underdog. Um, so it shows that the majority of the season they've been an underdog. Um, but they're keeping games tight, you know, obviously going by their record, you know, they've won they've won nine, nine games. So they're winning a lot and the games that they're losing, they're keeping tight as well. So... Although, as I said, that, that game week 14 was quite a, a big blowout. The Eagles won 48-22 and they also beat them the last regular season game, 22-16 as well. So, you know, again, it's similar what we talked about the Chiefs. They've got to, can the Eagles come off that bye and, um, you know, hit the ground running or will they be a bit a bit slow, a bit rusty? Um, in both previous encounters, the Eagles have come out and they've absolutely got off to a massive lead. Yeah. You know, um, the the week 14 game, they were 21 nil up um, in the first half, got to half time 24 7. And then in the in the most recent game, they were 16 nil up, you know, and sort of sort of cruised to a 22 16 win. So I think the start is massive. Um, one thing I like in this one is the Giants did a great job of taking away Justin Jefferson last week. Um, they put a, a cornerback on him and then they had a safety over the top. But that left a lot of space for the tight end. TJ Hawkinson racked up the yards and receptions. And, you know, one, one I'm looking at this week is Dallas Goddard, um, tight end for the Eagles. Um, his line is over 48 and a half um, with one bucket. Are we mentioning bookies or are we just keeping it a blank slate just in case? It's up to you. At this, I'm going to let you make that call. I'm gonna well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to name them. So, Bet365 <laughs> is, is 10 to 11. Um, for over 48.5 receiving yards. And every other bookie um, is a yard better off. He's 47 and a half, but he's a lot lower price. Um, so, you know, if you want if you want your best odds, but it's a yard more expensive, then uh, then that's your place to go. But yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking at. Um, I just think that, you know, they're going to have to try and nullify, um, I've forgotten his name. Uh, AJ Brown and uh, Devontae Smith both both on the edges and you know if if they're going to take away one of them then I just think it opens up the middle of the field for Goddard um, 
And Goddard, his last three games, he's been at 67 yards, 45 yards and 46 yards. So he's hovering just around that 48 and a half point mark. So I think I think he can do that. And then one that, one that I like, um, also that I found is a team to lead um, after every quarter. So just what I was saying about the Eagles starting hot, they're actually six to five to to be winning after you know the end of each quarter. So um, I think that's a, that's a great value. I think on that one, given given the history of these two teams um, this season. So for um, saying that though, I'm gonna you know as, as I said, I went against them last week against the spread and it burnt me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play safe and I'm gonna go Giants plus seven and a half here. Yeah. Um, again, I think it's a big. Obviously, over over seven points, they're expecting two scores. Um, it can it can quite easily happen. And I, again, with my best bets, I'm going to tease that line. I'm going to bring it in a little bit in favour of the Eagles. But for picking uh, based on that line, I'm going to go Giants plus seven and a half, and I'm going to take the overs because I, I I think the Eagles, yeah, they've um, just scored points, and and the Giants will have to score to keep up. So uh, that's what I'm looking at for this one. I like it, Bish. Yeah, I, I think pretty similar to you. Yeah, pretty similar to you. I think um, I think Giants are going to run the ball a lot. Obviously, Saquon's going to run as much. Daniel Jones is going to join him. I I reckon it's going to be a quite slow paced game. I can't. I think Philly might do a lot of running. Jalen Hurts um, is coming off an injury. There's debates about how healthy he actually is he is playing, but there's different reports on actually how good is his body. Um, I reckon there'll be a lot of handoffs, a lot of short yardage. I don't think they're going to challenge him. I think they'll be able. To, I think Philly might go into this thinking they can just get away with just ticking it along and getting the win here. I don't think there'll be any crazy explosive, explosive plays until maybe the second uh, half, where that might be needed, depending on obviously the score. Um, like I said, Giants keep it really close. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I've got the Giants plus seven point five a bish. The over under. Maybe take the under bish. I don't know. I, I, a lot of these games, I think the bookies are just on the just on the yeah. nozzle. So I don't, I don't quite know. But yeah, I'm I'm confident. Giants seven point five. Uh, Philly Eagles. Uh, the defensive. The big news I'd say is the defensive health. Uh, Robert Queen, CJ Gardner Johnson is uh, back. Also, you've got two. Um, probably the starting cornerback and one of the starting linemen are back ready to play. Perfect timing as the playoffs hit. Jalen Hurts is back, like you said. Might be good, might not be. We don't know yet. I guess we'll see. But yeah, they're getting healthy at the right time. I can't see Philly losing this, but I think it could be a slow paced game. Giants keep it close. They've got a great coach in Brian Dayball. Should be a good watch, but yeah. The one thing I've got though, Bish, actually, I'll chuck this in. Daniel Jones, very good against pressure. One of the highest rated quarterbacks against pressure. That's obviously one of Philly's uh, best parts of their defence. The, obviously, I think they've got three players, all Temple sacks. They've got yeah. two of the uh, leading sacks of all time. So, Yeah, they're, they're actually ranked number one in sacks, 69 on the year. So, yeah. in, that week, in, in that week, 14 games, sorry, Daniel Jones got sacked four times and Tyrod Taylor got sacked three times, so that's going to be that's going to be important for, for, like you said, to Daniel Jones to try and uh, stay upright. Yeah, like I said, he's they were too off the, the the record of all time, so that shows how good this team is at sacking. Um, but but Daniel typically is pretty good against uh, pretty good against pressure, so we'll we'll see. It's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know, bitch. It's tough. Come on, Mel. <laughs> This time, year, this time of year, it's uh, that's it. It's down to the nitty gritty, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. The one thing I'll say, like I said, yeah, Giants plus seven point five. All that I've mentioned, it's going to be close. A lot of good defensive plays, I reckon. A lot of uh, slow, slow four yard plays. Obviously, especially on the Giants side, keeping that clock whittling down, making the play, uh, making the plays just tickle on. There won't be a lot of time. Philly love to run the ball as well, obviously, with Hurts, with Miles Sanders. So we'll see. We'll see. And, uh, but yeah, Giants at plus 7.5. We're both on it, Bish. Typically, it never goes well, but let's do it. Let's do it. We're on it. 
<laughs> right, Bish. The Cincinnati Bengals versus the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills are minus five and a half favourites in this one. The over under is forty eight point five. Take us through this amazing game. Yeah, it's a big game. Obviously, it's, it it brews a lot of emotional sort of um, feelings with it as well. Obviously, this game was the Demar Hamlin game, um, yeah. maybe two weeks, three weeks ago now. Um, you know, good news is is looking good, and obviously he's is at home and and resting and recovering. But this, you know, this is this is a big game um, at the Bills' home stadium. So I'm sure their their crowd and everything will be will be massive. The atmosphere and and they'll all be be hyping up um, the Bills here. And uh, sort of that that the way that match went, so that's the only matchup those these two teams have had. You know, it literally went for I think ten minutes in that first quarter before it got cancelled and. The Bengals were having joy just um, over just over the middle, just little five yard, three yard sort of passes. Um, T Higgins was finding finding a bit of space, and um, one thing that just to start on Burrow, you know, we spoke about his offensive line a little bit from last year and, and into this year. Still, he's actually um, averaging two point three seconds per pass. So you know he's getting the ball out there real quick, which doesn't give the t- give the defense a lot of time to to get pressure on him. Um, and he's going to have to keep doing that because he's, he's last three weeks, he's down um, a starter on f- offense every week. So they've got three of their offensive starters out. Um, uh, they're definitely one out. L- Luel Collins is definitely missing. And then you've got Alex Kappa and um, uh, Jonah Williams. I, I don't, you know, the, all, all um, news is saying that they don't look likely to play this game. So they're not trained this week yet. Um, as of recording, so you know that's three starters down on his on his offensive line, and that could change it a little bit. I think that sort of can the Bills sort of um, sort of gamble a little bit more and try and um, realize that the Bengals may not be as effective on the ground running the ball with that offensive line, and can they sort of you know try and do a job on Chase and Higgins? I'm not sure, so we'll, we'll see how that one goes. But just on, on the base of that, one one thing I do like on this one is I think. They're going to have to spread it about. Um, Joe Burrow's going to have to spread it about. And if the Bills sort of lock in on Higgins or uh, Chase, I think Tyler Boyd plays an important part in this game uh, from the slot just over the middle of the field. And looking at his um, his line, his receptions line isn't out, so I'm not sure we're going to get one on that because usually, you know, at this time, with only four games, you know, you, you'll have all your, all your player props out there. But... Um, if it was around four, I'd I'd be keen over four and a half. I'd probably be keen to to take that. But his receiving yards is thirty five and and a half receiving yards, um, and I think that's that's a play for that one. Wow. I just think um, you know, it's I think that's where they're going to have joy. You know, I don't think it's the long play because um, I don't think Burrow's going to have the ball in his hands that that long enough to to dial up a big 40, 50 yard pass maybe to Jamar Chase. Um, so I think it's going to be the little dink and dunks, and it sort of plays into what the Bengals do. The second in time of possession in the league, as a result of just the work the way down the field methodically, um, you know, not not massive forty yard, fifty yard plays, but just slowly grinding teams down. Um, so it's an interesting one, and the Bills are the, the massive favourites. I don't know if that's. Maybe, it, I think it must be because of the offensive line of the Bengals, because yeah, I don't see why. Otherwise, they're, they're such huge favourites in this one. Um, so, on that basis, I'm going to lean the Bengals um, with with the plus five here. I, ju- I just think it's a it's a big number. Um, yeah. But I am gonna I'm gonna lean unders on this one just because I think because of that that Bengals offensive line, I think it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a grind for both teams here. Um, you know. The, the Bengals are not bad against the run. And, you know, I think obviously Stefan Diggs is, is a big threat and Josh Allen um, running the ball. But I, I, I just think they match up pretty well and it's going to be a bit of a grind. And as I said, um, the Bengals' time of possession, they, they hold the ball a lot, um, as we spoke about the Giants earlier. So I'm going to lean, yeah, Bengals plus five here and they uh, leaning on the unders. I like it, Miss, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I'll I'll dive into my one. I think fairly similar. I've actually got a stat that backs up one of your comments. Buffalo Bills have played five games against playoff teams 
Uh, not once have they beaten any of them teams by more than four. So it's it seems wild that five point five. Like you said, Buffalo extraordinarily good offense, um, but they make mistakes. Josh Allen makes mistakes. The whole the whole team seems to be mistake prone. They have a lot of turnovers. Um, opposite to Cincinnati, very low turnover team. Like you said, very safe plays. Joey B don't really don't really launch it. I think last year he did more crazy plays. This year they've just steadily steadily grinded out teams, like you said. So um, yeah, and Buffalo struggling past defense. That's obviously you, you've got Bengals all over that three amazing uh, wide receivers. The only good cornerback um, for Buffalo, in my opinion, Traver- Traverius White. I <laughs> know I can't say that, and it's Traverius White, and he uh, he'll be he'll be probably guarding Jamar Chase. He guarded Tyreek mostly uh, last game, uh, so I've actually got T Higgins to get a touchdown here. I think, like you said, Boyd Higgins, I'd I'd I'd, I'd lean heavily there. They've really struggled in past defense, the Bills, apart from the. Apart from normally the number one wide receiver or whichever side White is on, I think Higgins is going to be open a lot. I think uh, Boyd's going to be open a lot. Uh, don't that doesn't apply to the tight end Hayden Hurst? No, it's, yeah, Hayden Hurst because uh, Buffalo are number one against tight ends on the season, so I'd stay away personally from any Hayden Hurst bet. Uh, sorry, tag. I've I just got a little feeling that tag might randomly have Aiden Hurst in, but hopefully not. But uh, no, good, all good. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, get your money on either of them. I guess pick can choose. Do your own research. But that there, there are two. Bish has got more on Boyd. I probably got more on Higgins. But either way, I think both will be pretty successful in this game. Uh, Bengals on the defensive side, big play defense struggled a, a bit actually last week, didn't they? The yeah. against against Tyler Huntley, which is a big shock. Uh, you thought they'd be able to handle him more. It was closer than it needed to be. Obviously, they won, they won essentially on that 98-yard 98, uh, 98 defensive touchdown. So, honestly, quite quite shocking in that uh, regard. So, but, they, but they do make these big plays. They got two sacks, obviously, the touchdown that won them really the game, and they got a pick. Uh, so, they do have it in them. Eli Apple had a bit of a bad game. I don't think he's... Um, I don't think he's the most explosive. And if I give the Ravens one thing in the wide receivers who are pretty terrible, they they are very fast. Um, can can he guard Diggs? Maybe I, I think Diggs is more an amazing route runner more than just pure speed. So we'll we'll see. I think it'd be a very good game, uh, like you said. But no, I'm on the I'm on the Bengals plus five point five. I'll probably have a decent nod on it for all that I've talked about there. I think it's a good matchup for Bengals. Whether they win, it's a tough one. Like you said, offensive line. Can they make that big play? Can they stop Buffalo getting the sacks? It, when it counts, maybe not. But yeah, I can't see it being, I can see this being a really close grinding game. What do you think, Bish? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking about, again, I've, I've, I've wrote my best bet down and I've scribbled one out and I've uh, changed it. I'm thinking about changing it again now. But I, I just think one one big thing from this game is both these teams have a win over the Chiefs as well this season. So, you know, obviously, they've, they, you know, they've got to get through the games um, this week. But obviously, next week, you know, maybe that's something we uh, we talk about next week. like it. Yeah, we're on. Uh, final game then, Bish. The Dallas Cowboys versus the San Francisco 49ers. What another game this is going to be. This after Sorry for diving in, but that Cincinnati Bengals versus Buffalo game could have been the Super Bowl, and I don't think any would have complained. And I think at points this season, Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers, I said at points this season, could have been the Super Bowl, and I don't think any anyone would have complained. Two great games. Sorry, just dive in. But yeah, I'll get into it. The San Francisco 49ers, minus four-point favourites. The over-under is 46 points. Bish. Take us through it. Yeah, the Cowboys, great win last last week. Obviously, away from home, went into Tampa and and uh, Dak. What what a turnaround from the week before. You know, coming in with a lot of pressure on his shoulders, and you know all the picks he's been throwing, and and then he goes and and as a as a an unbelievable game really. You know, in in the playoffs, he's I think his stat line is three hundred and 
305 passing yards, four passing touchdowns, um, and a quarterback rating of 143.3, um, and a complete quarterback rating is 158.3. So he's not far off, you know. Well, sorry, but sorry to, do you want to explain to viewers what that kind of entails and how impressive that really is? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's very impressive. I mean, it it, it comes with a lot of stats, um, like you know your, your passing stats, your completion stats, and 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 things like that. But it's like I said, it's pretty much what is 10, 15 points off um, completing being the complete quarterback, really. So you know, it's not often you get that close to to that mark, and obviously in such a massive game that it was, a, you know, a playoff game as well. So you know, it's sort of. They've had a couple of shaky weeks, the Cowboys, but on the back of that, you'd think they're, you know, they're back to the being that team that they were for the for the majority of the year. Um, and yeah, the 49ers, we've we've sort of spoke about them all year. Very stout defensively, virtually impossible to run on. You know, they've not given up uh, more than 80 yards to to one running back this season. Although the, now they're starting to leak a little points now. You know, the, yeah. before yeah. before they kept games um, games were. They were winning games comfortably, but they were tight games. But now they seem to be scoring a lot of points, but also conceding a lot of points. So I think maybe that's the confidence in the quarterback, maybe. Sort of the defence is now, maybe they're, they're trying to come up with the big plays rather than um, sort of grinding grinding games out, you know, because he's, he's playing pretty well, Purdy. I think that first quarter he was, you know, he looked a little bit... Um, like the nerves were getting to him, but I think he settled down pretty well. Um, you know, and he had a he had a the sort of ran away with it in that second half, as you said earlier, McCaffrey, Debo, they've got weapons left, right, and centre. So for me, the big the big one in this game is it, I think Dak's gonna have to get it done through the area. You know, as I said, the, the 49ers defense is is very good. They're going the Cowboys are going with that Pollard and and Zeke split, and we've sort of spoke about Zeke. Jerry Jones likes him. He's keeping him in there. And I think in, you know, the playoffs now, you've got to go with your best option. And your best option here is Tony Pollard. And I think, you know, the split last week was Tony Pollard had 15 carries. Zeke had 13. Um, and the average per carry, um, Tony Pollard was 5.1 and Zeke was um, just over just over 2. Uh, 2.7 he was. So for me, you know... Zeke needs to take a backward seat here. You know, he's, he's not explosive. I think to beat the 49ers defence, you're going to need Pollard. Give him as many carries as he can handle. Um, you know, this, this it's do or die football here. You know, we, we, you're not here to please people. You're here to get, get W. So that would be the way I'd, I'd go for them. Um, and just how I see it going, um, I still think the Cowboys, Purdy, I think, you know, Cowboys are going to have to get pressure on him. They're going to have to force him into some errors, I think. Um, and one, you know, the the third on the year in sacks, so they bring plenty of pressure. Parsons is buzzing all over the place, whether he's at linebacker, whether he's playing defense on the on the end of defensive line. They're getting plenty of pressure. They sacked Brady um, twice last week and, and he threw an interception. So a little side bet I'm looking at, I'm looking at Purdy over 0 0.5 interceptions. Um, that's at uh, twenty. Um, to 23, 1.8. Yeah, for our decimals, that's that's Brock, Brock Purdy. And then just on the other side as well, Prescott, although he had that massive game last week, he is coming off a consecutive string of seven interceptions thrown. He's actually four to six to throw an interception. So, you know, we're just looking at them. Um, and then my main bets, 49ers minus four. It's like again, it's more than a field goal in it, so it's 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 big points. But I'm I'm going to ride with them. You know, I, I've sort of stuck with them all since that McCaffrey trade. Really, I think they're you know they're, they're the team. As, as I said, they're leaking some points, and that's that's why this game I'm I'm going overs here. I know it's it's quite low anyway, forty six, and you sort of expect that from a from a um, a forty nine side this year, only giving up you know on average sixteen points in the regular season, but in the last um, in the last four games, they've scored a minimum of thirty seven points, so they're actually scoring a huge amount of points. You know, they scored forty three last week. Um, um, they're in the they're in the thirties, obviously, um, the weeks previous to that. So I think that over forty six, I think I think that gets smashed out of the park. To be honest, I think this could be 
could be a big game here. Bish, I'm total agreement with you. I think the the other the other games have not. You can probably tell in my voice. I've not been that confident in any of the bets. This these ones seems to they, they, these. There's a lot to go at here, isn't there? I think there's a lot of different angles you can have a you can have a go at. Um, from my point, like you said, um, out for the last two weeks, I think San Fran have given a hundred. They've allowed over a hundred yards rushing. They've given up four point two on the rush. So it's been. It's. I don't know. Like you said, what's happened in the last two weeks? But it's like they've turned this amazing strength into not a weakness, but you know what I mean, a lot worse than what it was at certain in certain points in the season when it was literally a brick wall and you couldn't even you couldn't get past that line. How hard? How good the running back was? How good your line was? So yeah, it's, it's a strange one, really. What's happened? Maybe like I said, I, I I don't know. I don't know enough. There's not really been much come out onto why really so but I'm taking it for what it is um just a funny one here Bish one of my best bets was um I had an Ezekiel Elliott bet but you've <laughs> 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 you've slowly you you methodically took that apart and kind of embarrassed me really luckily I didn't say it before but I'm gonna say it now to embarrass myself but I had Zeke over 35 and a half rushing yards just yeah. on the back of, um, just on the back of them allow San Francisco allowing over a hundred rushing yards over the last couple of games. Um, Pollard's is like forty-seven. That's doable, and Zeke's is doable. To be honest, I can see them both actually getting over the yardage. The only thing that's keeping with with Zeke is that I believe Mike McCarthy will be trying to please Jerry Jones. More than even more than possibly winning the game. Obviously, winning the game comes number one, and that will please Jerry the most. But I think, secondly, he does. He, he wants to keep his job, old Mike. And uh, you, we know how Jerry Jones is one of the most erratic owners um, in the NFL. Um, the the coup cash of sorts of the uh, of the rugby of the NFL world. No, all respect to cast legend, but yeah, <laughs> wild wild person and. I think Jerry's a bit similar. Uh, so, yeah, I've got Zeke over 35 rushing yards. And Bish, I have got the better of the year for you, Bish. The oh. better of the year. And we'll only find out after probably a touchdown or two. But a successful two-point conversion is about five or six to one. And if oh, that yeah. carries on after what happened at the last game, for viewers who might have not watched it, the Cowboys kicker missed four um Four field goals, not field goals. Sorry, four extra points, which are should be bread and butter. You should miss one out of every out of every fifteen twenty. That's how he missed four in a row. And a lot of them are saying, once you lose your confidence in that way, you're you're gone. So if he misses, if he misses that uh, first um, field goal or extra point, you better believe they're going for that two point conversion. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I think that's just an unbelievable bet for the price because if it w one kick and they're going for two points every time. Um, so yeah, fun one for you there. But Bish, this is where we're going to disagree. I've got the Dallas Cowboys. So I've got the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Bish. <laughs> Cowboys, I think. I think I love. I just love that running game so much. Dax, Dax obviously hopefully done a switch it on. He's, he's been, he can't have another year like he did last year where he finished the playoffs in such an embarrassing moment where he couldn't get the final thing to have a go at the uh, have a go at getting the touchdown. He's I, I think he's learned his lessons. He is erratic. He does make mistakes, but he's also one of the best QBs in the league. And I think Dax gonna bring him the win here. Brock Purdy, he's had his swan song, he's had his Brock mania, he's had it, whatever you want to call it. I think he's had it, Bish. I, I think McCaffrey is scary, but there's there's one man who can stop him, and his name is Mika Parsons. And I think that Cowboys defence will have a good go at it. And obviously, it's all going to be on that. Uh, so, yeah, I've, I've got the Cowboys, and I'm going to go money line. Oh wow! That's a big one. I like I like the confidence. <laughs> I've just given Fish best shock of his uh, life there. Cowboys money line, Fish. I've got him winning this. I'm confident. Let's go. Let's have it. I love that. 
I, I do. I just wrote on my pad. I've wrote down your two point play. I think that I think that's a good bet. Yeah, like you said, it, it lines up. Um, Zeke, I just can't see it. If I'm honest, I just don't think he's explosive enough. You know, the the Forty Niners. You got Bosa. You've got um, uh, Kinlaw's back. You've got Warner. They're just so athletic, and and they get through that offensive line. And if they meet Zeke in the backfield. He just doesn't have that break tackle ability because he's not, he's not, you know, he's not, he's not on the move. He's not got that momentum. So I think that that's a big one. Yeah, I, I can't see Zeke getting it done, but you know, we'll we'll see. <laughs> yeah, you know, you you talked me out of it. To be honest, I wasn't confident. I had it wrote down, so I I, I wouldn't like it if I left it and then it come off. At least chucking it in the air for it to happen. <laughs> it's time. We'll start off. Actually, let's have it. Struggled last week, but he's like you said, he's earned his money in Dell for them two weeks when he landed it. Let's have it. Tags, touchdown, treble. Tags, touchdown, treble. The last one of the season. So obviously there's only two games next week. So yeah. let's see if we can go out in a, on a high. As you said, we're, we're massively in profit um, with the two big wins. But th- this week, the three are Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs, Devontae Smith for the Eagles and James Cook for the Bills. And that comes in at just under 29 to 1. Um, and pretty much across the board, most bookies, it's at 28 to 1. So, yeah, we've uh, I've locked that one in. Um, and let's see if we can uh, finish the season with a, with a nice big win. We've got a few minutes, Bish. Let me have your thoughts on Tag Stutch Down Treble. Let's, what, are your, what are your initial thoughts? Well, he's, he's, gone for, he's gone for value everywhere. And I, I like the Devontae Smith one. You know, he's, um, he's previously scored against the Eagles. As, we, as we've said, AJ Brown's a, a big threat. Can they, will they try and shut one of them down, which leaves the other one free? James Cook, he seems to be taking over that backfield at the Bills. Um, so I, I, I like that one. You know, he's, he's involved in, in all phases of the game, you know, rush early downs and um, in the passing play. I think the big one's Mahomes. Can, can Mahomes run over for one? You know, we, we know he likes to sling it around and I've, I've talked up McKinnon. So um, if Mahomes can, can get over... And you know, obviously that's that's the first game of the weekend. So if we uh, if we hit that one, I think um, you know we, we we could be in for a, for a big win. But you know that's I think that's the big one. Basically, if my memory serves me wrong, I think Mahomes normally gets a touchdown or so in these big games. It, I've got the image of when he does that little run with his thing and he, he just shoots <laughs> his arm out on the corner, doesn't he? I've seen him do yeah. it. Times in them big games when it's tight, no one's open, but he can, he knows he can make it. And he's a brave, he, he's very brave to be fair to him for someone so good, probably trying to look at it. And he does, he has the worst run I've ever seen, but I love it. He shakes his yeah. off. Yeah. 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 Well, well t- Tag's been, um, you know, he's, he's hit his, his quarterback touchdowns to be fair in, in recent weeks on, on his winners. So hopefully that's a good omen for us. I can see it. I think I'm 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 on it with him. I like that twenty eight to one. I think that's brilliant value. At least, like you said, it's un- unlikely as such, but brilliant value on the free. Um, Bish, take us through your best bets, please. My best bets for the divisional round. So again, my first one. I'm I'm playing with the alternate handicap here. So I've got both the Chiefs and the Eagles at minus six and a half um, as a double. Um, on the inter- alternate handicap. My second is the Cowboys at the 49ers, um, overs, over 46 total points on that one. And then my third bet is Dallas Goddard um, for the Eagles, over 48.5 receiving yards. Brilliant. I like it, yeah. And then the classic, Joe me the money, let's make some money. I can say that now. More confident than I could in previous weeks. <laughs> My first one, Bish, I've got Isaiah Pacheco. I'm, I'm playing it safe with this one because I'm not confident about many of the games, like I said, apart from this final one or two with Bengals, Cowboys. But I've got Isaiah Pacheco under 54 and a half rushing yards in the Chiefs game. As we said, I think we'll see more McKinnon. I think we'll see uh, Mahomes throwing it about. Obviously, it's an unstoppable offence and I'm... I think most people will be confident saying that. Uh, my second one, Bish, is Bengals uh, Bengals on the handicap doubled with a T. Higgins touchdown. I think he's a huge body. I think Burrow's going to look for him, and especially with um, the Bills not having that 
that depth in the cornerback uh, position. I think T Higgins will be will be an end zone threat. Uh, also, with them, how good they are at uh, defending the tight end position, number one in the league. So I think that means they're going to look for the other big body, if not Hayden Hurst, T Higgins, and then my final one, Bish. You'll you'll have an heart attack. The Dallas Cowboys money line and doubled up with. I'm making some money this week. Doubled up with a successful two point conversion. The odds on that will be wild. Let's go. <laughs> let's see if I can. Let's see if we can have a good one. Uh, Bish, give us our final thought. Actually, sorry, Bish. I apologise. Gordon Vale, you've not messaged us yet. Obviously, maybe whatever happened last week, you might have missed it. You normally tweet us. You're normally on top of this. Uh, you are a competition winner. Uh, please get back to us. You've got two tickets to any Super League game this season. Give us a message and we'll be happily sort them out for you. He's, uh, he's, he's clocked off, hasn't he? You know, the Brown, Browns are done for the year, so he's not he's not interested anymore. <laughs> yeah, it won't be, yeah, you're right. It's a goal. We need to. I might, if if not, I'll give you a tweet, Gordon. I know the I know your team's out, but come on, keep <laughs> following it with us. Uh, Bish, final thought. I'm looking forward to a, to another great weekend. You know, the divisional round is is uh, normally you know a, a great weekend and. Just going off, obviously, last last um, the Super Wildcard round, you know, all great games, and I'm looking forward to this. Some real good games, and especially that, that to finish it with a, with, you know, that Cowboys 49ers game. I think that's going to be a, that's going to be a real real good game to watch. Yeah, brilliant. Well, finally, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, it helps us loads. Like you said, we're do, we're doing we're doing all right. We're growing. We're getting more tweets. We're getting more interactions week on week. Keep going with us. Please chuck us some comments. Everything helps. We'll, we love it. We're passionate about it. Let's keep going and uh, support the boys. Uh, but, yeah, bitch, I think we've we've had a good go at it there. We've had a good crack. We've had a good laugh. Let's have a good weekend. Let's earn <laughs> some money. <laughs> Let's earn some money. All yeah. right, bitch, I'll see you this weekend then. Enjoy the games. See you, pal.